You're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine that's broadcast in English and Persian via New Channel TV. Hello everyone, I'm Maram Namazi. And I'm Fari Bors Puya. In this week's program, we have a special one for you, interview with three of the founding and activist members of Free Thought Lebanon. Stay with us and watch this wonderful interview with these three wonderful men. Don't go away. Thank you for doing an interview with us. I wanted to ask about Free Thought Lebanon, how it all started. Um, so Free Thought Lebanon uh, started as an idea in early 2008. Um, we are co-founders, Sami, me, Mario, and uh, Mazen. And we have another founder who's in absentia right now, whose name is Ahmad. Uh, it started as an online platform to gather people and discuss secular ideas and issues related to human rights and so now right now we have around 2200 people on our page and uh, what we do is that we've developed uh, so we've grown and we've uh, developed our plans our thinking and um, we do conduct currently uh, monthly uh, screenings where scientific uh, ideas and documentaries are projected and the people of the community sit down, discuss the ideas, uh, debate, and propose different things that you know we could do later in the future. So I, I think you were telling me about uh, how many people turned up at some of your events, like the documentary yeah. on Dawkins. Yeah. So uh, at one point uh, we had a, a DVD called Dawkins on Darwin, and um, this DVD was projected in uh, the theater in Lebanon. Uh, it was a uh, very fast event. We prepared for it in a week's time or so, and that was like three years ago. And the documentary uh, was projected. We also had an evolutionary biologist on the panel to discuss uh, evolution, the theory of evolution, and to have a Q&A with the people. So uh, frankly, we didn't expect a lot of attendance, but uh, fortunately, the room was fully booked. Uh, uh, and it showed us that people are really interested in uh, understanding and learning more about uh, science, scientific inquiry, and you know uh, uh, things that uh, you know that are not usually discussed in mainstream media, at least in Lebanon. So, Sami, did you guys know each other before you met, and how did you all come together for this great idea? Uh, actually, Mario and I met uh, back in college, where uh, we're classmates in the same physics class. And uh, actually, this is how it started from physics, actually. We had the same passion for science, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, where it starts for most of us, I think. So yeah, basically, this is where we met. And uh, Mazen, uh, do you think, uh, how key do you think the internet is in creating this group? Do you think it, it could have happened if it wasn't the internet age? I think it would have been much slower as a process. Uh, I didn't know either Mario or, or Sami beforehand. And basically, we've met at one protest for civil marriage, uh, Mario and myself. And we just exchanged names and um, interests. And then we uh, became in touch online. And that's how uh, I joined the group and we became active. So I think uh, Facebook in particular was very effective because it brought people together, uh, people who once uh, felt that they were alone, that these are only their ideas and uh, no one else uh, thinks like them in the society, uh, now knew that there are others out there. So we've met, we started uh, posting articles uh, about science, philosophy, free thought, uh, and this has led uh, eventually to uh, implementing uh, real life activities, not just online. Well, that's the whole brilliant thing about your work is that it's moved beyond online. So what sort of tips do you have for people who are working, who are free thinkers in the Middle East and North Africa, who want to move beyond the online sort of experience into more practical uh, work that you're doing? Um, well, uh, it depends. So basically, Lebanon is quite different from a lot of Middle Eastern countries. Uh, we have the uh, you know the luxury to uh, uh, you know uh, meet up and discuss that. We've seen like uh, different incidents happening, for example, in Egypt. And I think certain countries are or certain failed states cannot do do not have that luxury. But uh, it's not, I mean, 
no one bans you from discussing science. No one bans you from discussing philosophy. And it's quite simple. Like, it, I don't think even it, it does, you know, uh, I don't think that it breaks any country's laws to just sit down, discuss scientific debates and philosophical arguments and whatnot. So uh, I would say just make the step. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are online who discuss different ideas in different groups and probably they're using pseudonyms or uh, they're, uh, they're, maybe they even know each other. The only thing that they need to take is an initiative whereby they get to meet each other because uh, being physically present with one another is totally different than you know, being uh, discussing things online, e-meetings. So when you get to sit together, you get to discover a totally different aspect of the person you're with and it becomes m more of a humane interaction. What do you think about Facebook? Because you mentioned how important Facebook was, Sami, to you guys coming together. But also we hear about how Facebook is uh, shutting down or censoring atheist Arab, uh, Arab atheist pages, free thought pages. Um, have you had any experiences with that, or ha has it been easy to work on social media? No, no, not really. We, we did not face anything of uh, that kind. Uh, Facebook actually facilitated all of our work. Uh, uh, no, no, we didn't face anything of uh, the kind. Do you, do why, why do you think uh, the work that you're doing is so important for a, a country like Lebanon, or for the region, for that matter? Well, actually, it's not only important in a country like Lebanon, it's important everywhere, because, especially in the Arab world, because the human rights are being violated spe specifically in this area. So we feel obliged as humans to work and protect each, of, each one of us's uh, uh, rights as humans. So basically that's it. Uh, a secular state would uh, automatically guarantee all of the human rights for all of us. That's why we feel that uh, this is one of the goals we're uh, in need to work for. What about um, the sort of work that you're doing apart from these meetings? Because you were mentioning at the Rationalist International Conference, uh, Mario, some of the plans you have, some of the work that you're doing uh, other than raising awareness. Can I ask you, Mazen? Uh, sure. So basically, uh, Lebanon has a long and harsh history of uh, civil war between different uh, religious groups. And uh, after the civil war ended, these groups didn't really make peace. They just stopped uh, fighting. But uh, the uh, system we have uh, right now uh, in power and rule uh, it's quite corrupt because it's uh, quite sectarian. So what we're doing is we're trying to get people together and we're trying to form a sort of an alternative identity. So basically we're uh, promoting secularism, uh, we're supporting uh, secular laws or secular law drafts such as civil marriage. We're trying to support initiatives that have to do with uh, stopping censorship in the country. So basically we're trying to promote culture from uh, one aspect and then the other aspect we're trying to build the capacity of the uh, Everything society in Lebanon, and we're trying to uh, support any other initiative that's happening in Lebanon that has to do with the human rights, secularism, free speech. So all those together, I think, are uh, leading towards changing our reality. I mean, I think when, when I hear about you guys, I feel really hopeful, and I feel so happy to hear about what you're doing. It makes me emotional. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, uh, how can people really support you, like, not just in a word, but practically? What sort of support other free thinkers and seculars, rationalists, Mario? Um, just to point out, um, we are individually involved in every secular activity, not as a group or free thought Lebanon, but in every single secular initiative in the, in the country. One is, for example, the Laik Pride. We marched uh, in the Laik Pride on individual manners. We weren't as a group there. But uh, in case people want to support us, uh, we would suggest uh, following us, and uh, we would suggest, uh, I mean, they would have to tell us how, how they can help us. I can't. Uh, I, d I can't ask people to, uh, for a certain request, uh, they might not have. For them, if they see that they do have a certain uh, facilitation for us or a certain uh, ground of support, they can get in touch with us through our page and we will definitely uh, work out uh, things out with them. Okay. So um, I, I suppose we'll put all your details on the bottom of the screen so people will be able to get in touch with yeah. you. Uh, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to say as final comments to those who are watching uh, this interview? 
Uh, maybe I can add something to the question you previously asked to Mario uh, concerning uh, how other uh, groups or NGOs can help us. Well, I think that supporting other secularists in different regions of the world is very important uh, because I don't want to sound uh, weird, but I think that there are serious problems when it comes to secularists being uh, executed and uh, being fighting the real fight of uh, being a secularist in a country that uh, uh, that uh, doesn't allow that. Those pro kind of problems are different than problems that are being faced in other countries in the West. I'm not undermining the other kind of problems, but I think that we deserve, we deserve to be highlighted more and we deserve to receive a bit more of help. I, I don't know what type of help exactly, maybe if we have had a certain project, it can be financial help, maybe it can be some uh, screening of our work in an international conference or international uh, thing. So yeah, I think that we deserve to be highlighted. And one of the things is uh, you had mentioned, I think, um, th that it was good for you to be at this international conference, just meeting other people, making links, networks. I think that's important for any sort of campaign or activist. So I guess that's one one way in yeah, which uh, that could be done. Um, so um, m maybe some final words, just in general, on on what you're planning, what what your what what your vision is for the future. Well, uh, I envision. The thing is, uh, reality is uh, is harsh in the Middle East, and there are a lot of uh, groups that do not want people to express and to exist even. And we see that from Takfiri groups all around, f from Iraq to uh, to Syria, people killing, even Muslims. You know, trying to they just want to eradicate everybody and create their own. Form. So um, I see with our work, I hope that we will be able to create a, a more tolerant society, a society that accepts the other based on his merit and based on himself or herself as a human, uh, rather than his ideas and ideologies. And I think that's a very important thing that Lebanese people at least should learn following the civil war and even the, the whole region itself. Um, I would envision uh, if, if the proper support platform is given, I would envision a world that is better off. And uh, Mazen, just finally from you, I mean, you mentioned uh, this whole thing of having this idea of a, an alternative identity, you know, a human identity, and I think that's so crucial for the world, not, not just the Middle East and, and Lebanon. Can you just, as final words, just expand on that and why it's so important? Absolutely. I think the Middle East is in need of revolution, nothing less. And I think this begins in, on the intellectual realm. We need new values, new, uh, new culture to adopt. So I think everyone in the Middle East is afraid that uh, if you're Christian, you're afraid of a Muslim and otherwise vice versa. So we need a new system, we need a platform, uh, a common ground for uh, coexistence and to start building a common society. And I think secularism is, offers the best uh, alternative out there. So basically it's a separation between the public sphere and the private sphere. What you want to do in your private life, that's your business. You can believe, you can disbelieve, uh, completely free. However, in the public sphere, uh, the laws that should be adopted should be uh, agreed upon by the masses democratically. So no, no one group uh, should uh, enforce its own worldview on others. So I think uh, once more people start to uh, agree with that uh, concept, then we'll have a better chance of actually getting there. So we're trying uh, gradually and slowly to uh, build uh, a bigger group. And there are other uh, brave initiatives happening in the Middle East, um, in Egypt, in Syria, even in Iraq. Uh, so we're uh, optimistic, we're, we're uh, realistically optimistic. And I think uh, eventually we will uh, change the face of the Middle East. Yeah, I, I'm sure of it. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed that interview with Free Thought Lebanon. I think what's very clear when you hear about the wonderful work that they're doing is that free thinking is hugely important for people of 
the Middle East and North Africa, and particularly for young people. And, and you could see that is a, this is a vast movement. Recognition of this mass movement is so important for, uh, to give them, I think they've been denied the rightful uh, you know, position that they should um, attract internationally. Um, they, they're always sort of isolated unnecessarily. We need to make sure that they are supported, heard properly and recognised. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. It's a special program with this interview alone. We do want to tell you that we won't be around for two weeks, but we will be back in the first week of September with new programs. Don't miss us too much. We'll see you again soon. Have a wonderful two weeks until then. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.